I want to ask you a very important question. Have you been struggling with the IELTS academic reading tests? You answering yes is normal because I had difficulty as well. But the question is, how was I able to maneuver my way to get the band score I wanted? This is what I'm going to share with you in this video. Here, I'm going to share with you the five strategies I inculcated that did help me get the actual score I was looking out for. At the point, the IELTS academic reading test became easier and more easier for me that I had no fears anymore. So these are the tricks I'm going to share with you in this video. Apparently, watching this video to the end, you get a chance to download some good books I use for my IELTS academic practice test. So keep tuned to this video and then let's jump start. All right, so welcome back. I really appreciate you for being here for the first time. Apparently, I won't wait for this video to end before I tell you to subscribe because I believe that whatever information I'm going to share with you here will go a long way to help you. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button and become part of the family. And also make sure that you are sharing this video to as many people as you can. There are a lot of IELTS test takers out there who are struggling to pass the IELTS academic reading test, you know. And I think sharing my experience with you guys will go a long way to help. So just share so that your friend who is struggling with this aspect of the IELTS will be able to find, I mean, a solution to that. Okay, so when you go to my LinkedIn page, just as you are seeing on the screen, um, I shared some five strategies I used that did help me get the actual band score I was looking out for in the IELTS academic reading test. I must confess that the IELTS reading test was very, very difficult for me. In fact, considering all the four aspects, I got to realize that if I would fail the IELTS, then it might probably be coming from the reading test. So I used to tell my friend, I used to practice with that. If I don't pass IELTS, then it's because of the IELTS academic reading test. But along the line, I got to realize that there was this strategy I was using that it helped me. And I'm here to share that with you. I'll be doing some screen displays and as a matter of fact, I'll be leaving some links in the description box for you to also have access to some of the books I used and some important links that can help you um, to see the art academic text so easy and flexible. So let's jump start. All right, so when you go to my LinkedIn page, just as you are seeing on the screen, apparently I shared an article today with regard to how to pass the IELTS academic reading test. And I'm going to read, and as and when possible, I'll show some screen displays for you to get a fair idea of, I mean, what is happening. So um, let's start it this way. You know, um, as I already mentioned, I had many questions regarding the IELTS reading test. And it appears this aspect of the test is tearing the confidence of many IELTS test takers. If you should ask people why they won't write IELTS, what they will say is that, I mean, the IELTS reading test is very difficult and they fear to fail. Okay, so I felt like, why don't I share my trick? So I was in a similar situation. I was once wearing the shoes of many IELTS test takers and if I'm able to maneuver my way through, why don't I share my tricks and strategies with you guys? So the number one strategy I will talk about here is practice with the right practice materials. You see, there are thousands of IELTS reading materials out there and not all are genuine, not all are standard. It will be fair to critically choose the right practice materials and work with them. If I should recommend the practice materials I used, apparently there are three of them I will tell you here. The first one is the Cambridge practice test for the IELTS, which is the standardized, I mean, practice test for the IELTS. What this means is that should you practice the Cambridge, I mean, practice test, the questions, the passages and everything in there is similar to what you'll be meeting on the DD. Beside the Cambridge, I also recommend that you use the 101 IELTS reading past papers. And for me, I recommend this practice material because, you know, comparing the passages to that of the Cambridge, I could see that the IELTS 101 is much, much, much longer. It's got much longer passages. So within the 60 minutes, I try to overwork myself. I mean, to go through all these longer passages and as a matter of fact, get the answers right. So if I'm able to work my way out through these longer passages within 60 minutes, then how much more the standard? That's why I recommend that you use this practice material to go the extra mile, to work yourself out. Okay, so that's the second book I recommend. And that you can also find for yourself reading actual test. It also comes with um, longer passages than the Cambridge. What this means is that it's like you are going the extra mile, as I explained earlier. So these are the three books I recommend for you if you want to have a fair knowledge, a fair understanding, and an easy go with the IELTS academic reading test. All right, so the second strategy I talked about here is build a concrete strategy. 
you know, you need a strategy to pass the IELTS reading test, and that is so true. You need a strategy. You can't just go in just like that. I mean, going to give this trial and error stuff, that won't work. Make sure that before your examination day is due, you have a strategy you've practiced with on so many occasions and seen that, okay, with this strategy, I'm able to get majority of the answers within the 60 minutes. And this strategy also helped me to locate the answers so easily. Now, if you go a strategy like that, then it's considered to be a concrete strategy. Don't forfeit it. Make sure you're using this strategy. So I feel that you're not timing yourself, okay? I mean, don't time yourself at the start of your practice. Make sure that you are knowing the structure and the format of the reading test. Make sure that you're knowing the question types. And apparently, the second thing you can do to be able to work out your strategy is watch other people. Watch how other people answer the IELTS reading test, okay? You know, one thing that it helped me was that I had to explore many strategies from different people. And then through that, I could pick one or two, put them together to make my own. Okay, so that's what I would recommend to you do. Just for the start, watch people. See how they answer the IELTS reading questions. And then pick which ones work best for you. Now, start by using one at a time. Practice with it. And if it doesn't work, don't stick to it. Change it until you get to realize that okay with this one i can apparently i mean figure out my way out and then get my answers so one thing that did help me was that i started by exploring people's ideas with regards to answering the questions i adopted i stole let me use the word i stole people's techniques and at the point i realized that most of them were not helping but um, i remember i kept on watching some videos and i could extract I mean, tricks and techniques from different angles, put them together to become my own. So to be able to build your strategy, your own strategy, just make sure that you are doing this. I always say that my strategy may not probably help you and someone else's strategy may not probably help you as well. So what happened here is that you have to explore all the strategies around and then see which one helps you best, okay? And that is what I did. And as I said here, use the trick for some time. If it helps, keep up with it. If not, dump it and explore new ones. It's as simple as that. And then the third strategy I would recommend is be consistent with the practice. You know, you don't just practice once and have a very good grip of it. It doesn't happen that way. You have to be consistent. In this article, I made mention of the fact that consistency is a matter of success. If you want to be successful in everything, you have to be consistent. You have, if you want to be good at doing something, you have to be consistent. You have to keep doing it every day, okay? An important part in passing the IELTS academic reading test is to be consistent with practice. I know friends who would want to pass the reading test it's like they practice today, they wait until next two weeks before they do the next practice. That won't help. That is no consistency. If it's about dedicating one hour or two hours of your time every day to daily with an aspect of the IELTS, whether the reading, the listening, or the writing, that will go a long way to help you. So just be consistent with practice. Practice it every day on to the day of your test okay leave no stone unturned once you keep on touching it every day your weaknesses begin to show and you are able to map up the tricks to turn them into strength so what i would say is that be consistent probably you might have had a strategy that is working for you if you don't consistently keep using it you may forget okay so don't just explore strategies stick to one and then consistently use it Look at where the potholes are and try to fill them up. So at the end of the day, when you get to the examination center, you're not going to change that strategy. You know it's been helping you throughout your practice session. And that is the same thing I did. I said to myself that I was not going to change the strategy because it was really helping me. I could get my answers on time and apparently I could work my way out or I could probably get most of the answers within the stipulated time. So just be consistent with your strategy. And at the end of the day, you'll be good at it. And the number four strategy I will talk about here is go the extra mile. I have already talked about this extensively in the first point I reached. I said here that don't limit yourself to practicing only the Cambridge practice test. Go beyond that. You see, most people are glued to the Cambridge practice test because they believe that that is the standard. Apparently, there's nothing to waste about that. That's the standard. But 
see yourself as a runner going to compete in a race for you to become the favorite um probably you have to go the extra mile i know this runner who used to practice on the mountain probably knowing very well that at the end of the day the race is going to be done on the low hill but then he is doing this just to probably boost his momentum and stamina just to go the extra mile and for me i felt like going the extra mile with my IELTS academic reading test was a way for me to see the passage very short and to be able to get a firm grip of it understand it and then look out for my answers so the question is how can you go the extra mile or how do you go the extra mile it's very simple so i've set um some stuff on here first of all read complex articles from books and that's what i did i remember i had i subscribed to this um newsletter from i think bbc and then um, new york times you know their articles are very complex with big 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 vocabulary and what i did was i kept reading those especially before i do any reading practice i read an article from the new york times okay and because they had big vocabularies i had dictionaries by me that i felt like looking out for those words and then lo and behold in most of the practices i did i came across some of the words and because i already looked out for their meanings the passage became more simpler and understandable so just go the extra mile by reading complex articles from books, newspapers, journals, and then listen to complex audio messages. So at that time, I used to listen to BBC News, I used to listen to CNN News, and every audio message, probably in the form of podcast, um, just listen to it, okay? And if you come across any keyword or any vocabulary you've not come across before, make sure you're writing it down, look out for the meaning in the dictionary. And then also make sure that uh, probably I recommend that a few weeks to your test forget about the cambridge test and then stick to the either the reading actual test or the 101 IELTS and um, past papers because they've got longer passages and if you struggle i mean if you work you out around these longer passages at the end of the day when you get to the examination center and then get a standard the passage will be shorter for you you'll be able to probably scheme scam and then get your answers based on your keyword technique so just make sure that you are going the extra mile and that's what i mean by that just make sure that you are working yourself out beyond what you expect on the DD. And I've made mention of some of the things you can do on here. And the last but one strategy I would recommend here is for the first that review your mistakes. The last technique is much of a bonus to you guys, okay? And then um, you wrap up. So what I said here is that review your mistakes. I know some friends who are keen at practicing 10 practice questions in a day some go to the extent of doing 12 15 practice sessions in a day and it's like i always say that it's not about how many practice sessions you can do in a day but it's about how proficient you are at reviewing the questions or the practice sessions you've done i remember that i used to do just one practice session in a day and i spent time to review why i had some answers wrong and then why i had some answers right and that did help me so along the line i realized that i was gradually filling up the portal I was turning my weaknesses into strengths so that meant that I was learning and I was growing so I could realize that the number of mistakes I made in my first practice was possibly more than what I made in my 10th practice because after every session I take time to review them I put my dictionary by me to look at those words that were so difficult for me to understand and at the end of the day I'm able to probably pick myself up and the good news is that most of the vocabularies I looked out for in my subsequent practices, I came across some of the words and it made the passage very easy for me. And that is what I also recommend for you. Don't be concerned about the number of practice sessions you do in a day. Be meticulous about the mistakes you've made and how you can apparently rectify them. And that is the most important thing. That is the art of learning. And then the last technique I'll share with you here is the keyword technique. What do I mean by this? You see, I always say that as an IELTS test taker, once the IELTS reading test is put in front of you, see yourself as a hunter. See the passage, I mean the long passages as the forest. Probably seeing yourself as a hunter in there as an IELTS test taker means that some long passages with some answers hidden in them and they expect you to fish out those answers. So the question is how do you do that? Probably you are able to do that as fast as possible with what we call the keyword technique. There are some keywords in the passages as well as in the questions that can directly point you to where the answers are in the passages. Okay, so as a hunter, you should be able to probably see some landmarks and then some trademarks in the forest to be able to say that, okay, I've got 
there's an animal here that I can shoot. There's an animal hidden here that I can shoot. Okay, so I know a hunter who probably can trace the foot of some animals and then probably locate where they are and kill. So the keyword technique is much more of a trick to help you locate your answers in the passage. Probably my next video I'll be talking more about this technique with some kind of displays on the screen for you to see what I mean by this. But for the meantime, these are the tricks and techniques I think should you incorporate them would go a long way to help you pass the IELTS academic reading test. Apparently, um, you can check in the description box for whatever link you need to probably have a fair share of the IELTS reading test. And I also say that before you take a leave of me, just visit my LinkedIn page, let's connect. And you know, I share most of my stars on there before it comes to YouTube. So you can get access to most of the articles I've written so far and then um, you enjoy. So, well, I believe this video has been very, 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 for if it has hit the subscribe button and then become part of the family also share so that friends and people out there can also have a facial of this thank you very much and i hope to see you in my next video